Now I have a bright green light. I will try again. <laughs> Welcome to the July 3rd, 2019 Wareham Conservation Commission meeting. Mr. Baptiste, who's present? Uh, myself, Kenneth Baptiste, um, Rob Lassen, Jim Smith, uh, Chair Sandy Slavin, and Agent Dave Pichet. Thank you. We have some continued public hearings. Scott and Tracy Denton, please come forward. And Mr. Pichet will read to the project. Oh, identify yourself, please. Uh, I'm Scott Denton. And you have some green cards for us before you sit. <laughs> Thank you. I have the last one. Do you want? Do you want to see it? Kenny and I can share. Okay. This is the plan. Oh, this Showing is the plan. Our 30-foot. Oh, the Vista plan. Okay. Okay, so this um, project site is at Burgess Point, and this project involves the removal of trees within a coastal flood zone and within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Um, Twelve trees are proposed to be removed on the conservation property owned by the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Um, and again, this was the property that had been given approval to have large number of trees removed uh, from the site for an ecological restoration project. Um, at the last meeting, we had continued the hearing because um, the abutters were not notified and also to give members potentially a chance to go back to the site and see the location of the proposed trees to be removed. Um, in my opinion, there are some of the trees that are identified that um, should not be allowed to be removed because they are um, right at the edge or even on one or two of the trees within the wetlands. Um, there are other ones that are not within that area, so I would say that potentially those could be allowed to be removed. Um, and I can point those out on the plan. Um, again, there was a significant number of trees already removed on this site, a um, couple acres worth and so uh, those trees were identified and marked as part of that initial project. Um, and again, some of the trees proposed to be removed at this point are within either uh, the 30-foot no activity zone or, or one actually in the wetland. Um, the Conservation Commission also holds a conservation restriction on the property, and there is language in that restriction that uh, gives the commission the right to allow tree removal to remove hazards, disease, insect or fire damage, um, not additional tree clearing to provide for views though. Um, so again, with that, I would open the discussion to the commission and again, recommend that the trees that are either in the wetland or right on the edge of the wetland um, not be allowed to be removed, but the others the commission could consider allowing to be removed. Uh, and again, this is primarily for the purpose of uh, enhancing the view for the applicant. So that's where we are. Thank you. Um, Scott, please, I, I didn't ask you to identify yourself for the record. Yes, I'm Scott Denton. Thank you. No worries. Any, anything you'd like to add to Mr. Pachette's comments? I think Mr. Pachette's comments are very good and fair. Um, I, one thing I'd like to add um, is the original proposal um, the Buzzes Bay Coalition made to this commission is that there's a note in there somewhere about a remaining 25% canopy. And um, for whatever reason, um, nobody's issuing a complaint here, but the canopy is probably, especially closest to our property, is probably closer to 
than it is the 25% that was originally agreed to. So we don't feel as though this is a uh, major request. We think it's fairly minimous, um, especially in the context of the fact that I don't think the original amount of trees that were supposed to come down came down. And that's why we have come out, you know, come forward with this request. Thank but you. I had requested that some, that some board members go out and take a look at the site. Was that done? Did anybody get out there? I guess we didn't. Okay. Um, I had the paperwork. Questions yeah. from the board? Well, well this diagram, which trees are we talking about? The ones that are the, yellow. Dotted in yellow? Those are meant to be trees. Those dots, those yellow dots. Yeah. These, these down here. Right. And the ones further up the trail on the other side, too. On the low part? Yeah, any, any spot where there's a yellow dot, even on that other trail, are all proposed to. Right, but the ones you're, you're proposing to keep. Yeah, the these, these, I think, should stay. This one is in the weapon, basically. Okay. These up here, I think, are okay. I think some of these as well. Um, Dave, is, do you remember which tree was the dead tree? I'm, I'm, it was, I, uh, I don't I think recall it's, specifically, but there definitely was one that was totally yeah, I think it's the WP-12, but I'm not 100% sure. Obviously okay with allowing that to come down. Okay. So you, uh, you don't have any issues keeping the ones in the wetland? I think we have to keep the ones in the wetland, yeah. I think that we wouldn't, that wasn't by intention, so when we requested the map and saw that, we kind of figured, well, that's not going to happen. Sure. <laughs> and I, you know. I don't see any issues with this. Great. All right. Um, is there anybody here who'd like to speak for the project or against the project? Okay. I believe we had a... We had a written statement filed. Uh, can you come up and identify yourself so we can pick you up on the mic? Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yes, the Buzzards Bay Coalition did submit something. I'm Mead Benhammer from the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Uh, I'd just like to state that there was a written um, letter from Mark Rasmussen, the president of the Buzzards Bay Coalition, which was, was submitted this week. Um, it says that this plan is consistent with our habitat management goals for the property, um, and we have worked together with the Dentons to um, identify the trees that are shown on the map as well as shown on the plan with uh, our restoration plan, which was approved by this Conservation Commission. Um, and that's that 11 by 17 figure there. Yes, that letter was in our packet, is in our packet. Okay. I think one of the concerns we have is that some of these are identified as being in the wetlands. So, Scott, if you can come forward, I think Mr. Bichette will show you which ones we are concerned about being in wet feet. Do you want to use this map? Yeah, I yes. think this one is clear because it actually shows things a little better. But I would say these right here which are basically either at the edge or in the wetland. This one, um, these I'm okay with. Um, these I think are, are fine. Okay, so if I'm looking at this thing, what we're looking at is this called PP7, PP7 at the top, being these two right here. That's all right? Yep. The next one here, you said that WP12 was dead? We think so. I think it was one of these. I think it was one of these. This one was the big pine tree right in the swamp. Okay, that um, does. So that one's, one's going to stay. And what about these three right here? Uh, these three, the commission is okay with those, and I would say those are okay to be removed because one of those was one of them anyway. Okay, the cluster has PP6, PP6, and WP12. Do you see where we're referring to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so right now we've identified five so far, and the next. These, I'd say, should not be taken, and these could be. 
just that one. Well, it this says is two, this two is oak. two oak four inch. That's my recommendation. He doesn't want to take these. Well, that's because if we take a look at those, they're up into the what is referred to as the swamp, the shrub swamp. So this group right here would right stay. On, on, on his drawing, this one on the here map that marks it, if you saw it up there, they're like they're this couple like right on the line. These, 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 this three like here and this area. cluster of yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so he's identifying. And we're pushing. Yeah, that yes. one. Yes. No, which is oh, yeah, the that's, big that's the, yeah. Yeah. Are we, we clear on which it. ones we are? We believe are far enough outside of the wetlands that could be this, removed. These three, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. This this one's tight. This one's tight. Mm -hmm. These, uh, he said no to this one, which are, and then these two are definitely coming out. I'm counting seven to be removed or being if we approve will seven to be removed right yep this is the only one that when I ask about it oh, yeah. he's he's the time. He flies. that's really a great view yeah. of the Osprey nest so that would be a nice it'll take yes. yep. yep. But see, those are also pretty so. Dave, can I ask you a question? Am, so, I, able, am I able if, to? Yeah. We have a question about one of the trees. Okay. So I'd like to see the map, Dave's map, because. We're just curious about this one, because we think it's like right on the line. It's kind of like recommendation it's up to the Commission to make their judgment so now if um, it is pr approved to remove the seven that we've indicated who will remove them who will cut them down I would probably work with mark on that uh, as part of the uh, maintenance plan for the land I would expect that he'll do it as he comes in with his cutters I would Expect we use whoever's been in, in the past. And removal of all debris. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, that is uh, con like consistent with the habitat management plan. We've been removing all debris chipped off site, so that would continue with any tree removal on the site. I think that's in the original request too. I think we wrote it that way. Okay. Um, any. Seeing no one, any, anybody else wants to speak for or against the project? Seeing none. Move to close. Mm -hmm. I heard a motion to close. Second. I heard a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? And what would you board like? I need a motion. I need a. Um, uh, move to grant with the uh, conditions of the seven trees that were pointed out. And I'm not sure what the negative number is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, it would be a negative two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Negative two with the removal and disposition of the seven trees that were identified and agreed to. I have that motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Well, see, Mr. Bichette, before you started anything, okay? Absolutely. You got your seven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Okay, can you next continued hearing? DP and Junior and Carolyn Higgins in care of JF Engineering, come forward, please. Higgins. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Bob Rogers with okay. GAF Engineering. Thank you. I can't find my paperwork. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Mr. Bichette. We'll read to the project. Is there a new plan? Um, no, this is not a new plan, just the one we had from last meeting dated June 19th. One you have? Probably. Let me look. I've got several. Oh. Here it is. You want, you want the big one or the little one? My eyes don't work either way, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, this project site is at 38 Winship Ave in the Burgess Point area, and the project involves the construction of an addition, garage, deck, um, driveway, septic work, and dry wells in the buffer zone to a coastal bank at this site. A 12 by 40 foot addition with a 17 by 28 foot Screen porch is proposed, and this would be approximately 32 feet from the top of the coastal bank. Um, also proposed is a 24 by 42 foot garage, and this would be approximately 55 feet from the top of the coastal bank. Um, dry wells are proposed to handle roof runoff from the structure. Um, also, the existing crushed shell driveway is uh, proposed to be paved and stormwater structures are proposed to handle the runoff from that new impervious surface area as shown on the plan. <clears throat> um, at the last meeting, we had continued this hearing because we did not have a DEP file number. Uh, we have since received that with no negative comments. Um, so I would recommend the issuance of the order of conditions with the standard conditions for the project and that both hay bales and silt fence be used uh, for erosion control during construction. Anything you would like to add? No, Madam Chair. From the board, any questions? Uh, previously on other things, we've uh, worried about corners of building coming so close to the 30 foot. Is that an issue here? On on the screen porch and the corner of the deck? Right, it is close. They, they did meet the 30 feet. And in this particular instance, it's all lawn, existing landscape lawn area. So it's not, it's more, it's more decking and then not. not yeah, like, and they okay. did technically meet the 30 foot. So even though it's right on the edge, they did keep it out of it, so. Yeah. And it, it already exists. They're just changing the con con structure. I mean, it's a full, the deck's there now, right? It's a porch? Um, I'm, I'm not uh, particularly aware of that. Uh, well, it's, so, isn't but that right now on the side of the house? It says exist, existing deck? Yeah, the deck, the deck is there. There is a small increase in size as far as the deck goes, and obviously the new screen porch is new. Um, yeah. But again, they do keep it right just to the edge of the 30-foot, no activity. So I would be okay with it. I do have a question. On a previous plan, there were three trees to be planted down by the water. I see on this recent plan, they're all moved to the side. Proposed red cedar, black oak, and red oh. oak. Those were locations that were selected by the owner. Um, so I, I understand there was a prior issue of um, unauthorized tree clearing on the coastal bank. Um, they, you know, the owner directed us as to where to to locate those trees to be replanted. So were these replacing something that was conditioned in a prior yes. order of conditions? Yes, that's correct. Uh, there were some trees that had been cut that were not part of the previous uh, approval. And so they were to plant some trees back 
and that's part of why that's included in the plan. I think on the original plan, they were placed, and then the owner didn't like the location because of potential blocking will, the view. As they grow, they'll block their and view. So that's why they relocated them to the current position. Do they have enough space for the trees to be full grown? Um, we'll have to make sure that they are spaced appropriately. That can be tweaked slightly if they need to be, but I think the intent was to kind of cluster them off to the side versus put sure. them right in the middle of their view. So that's why you see the reconfiguration. Okay, anybody in the audience speak to for or against this project? Seeing no one raising their hand. <laughs> Any other questions on the board? Did I ask you if no, you no. had a question? No. Hmm. Okay, no we have no one in the audience. I move to close. I have a, I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. The hearing's closed. Move to uh, grant uh, negative two no. standard no standard but conditions. This just is standard just, conditions. This, this is just an order of conditions. Gotcha. It's a notice of intent. Yeah. I'll never forget it. <laughs> okay. I have a motion to issue the standard order of conditions for this project with a stipulation that trees are planted to the point that they can grow properly and the silt fence and, hay and the silt fence and hay bale there's the motion agree Aye. okay i got a second all in favor Aye. Aye. opposed abstain before you start any work see please mr see mr Prichette's. thank I'll you madam try chair again. you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> Nick's continued hearing, we have Gary Osman and Kara JF Engineering. Anybody here for that project? Yes. I saw a letter in here for that. Please come forward and identify yourselves. Steve Kelleher, Stephen Kelleher Architects. Maureen Thomas, Buzzards Bay Coalition. Sorry. I'm sorry. Brian Grady with GAF Engineering. All right. Is there a new plan? Try to move the house back a little further? Not since the last plan that we have. Anybody get down there and see it? It, it was staked out so everybody could go down and see it. To move it, to move it back or to, to based show, on this to plan? Show, based on this plan. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reading that letter that's in our thing. Okay. This one, yeah. I'll find it. They don't have any problem with it. That's the sort of... Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I have a plan What's dated... 513-2013. Five twenty. Five twenty three. What did I say? Five thirteen? Yep. Five twenty three nineteen is the latest plan I have. This is dwelling Revision six. Five twenty. Yes. yes. Well mine says twenty three. Five twenty three. Okay. That's... But it does say version six. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same plan. It's just Got a different date on the stamp for some reason. Um, well, if I could refresh. Uh, Sorry. Mr. Bichet gets first. Okay, that's then right. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, the project site is at 18 Maritime Drive, and the project involves the demolition of an existing cottage and the construction of a new dwelling 
garage, septic system, and grading in the buffer zone to a coastal bank, bordering vegetated wetland and within a coastal flood zone. Um, the existing cottage is to be demolished and the existing paved area adjacent to the cottage is to be removed. And this is within the buffer zone and the flood zone, zone AE elevation 15. A new 30 by 40 foot dwelling with attached 24 by 24 foot garage is proposed. Um, at previous meetings, we had talked about pushing the new construction further from the coastal bank. Uh, we do have a recent plan revision, which shows a different configuration than the original plan that was submitted. Uh, at the last meeting, we had continued the hearing so that members could potentially look at the house, the new location as it was staked out. Um, we do have a DEP file number for this project. So um, at this point, I'll have Brian speak and make his pitch for it and any questions from the board. Okay, thank you. Well, just to refresh everyone's memory, I'll hand out a couple of photographs again. Just like the color printer. I have stock in ink. <laughs> All right, so what I've given you tonight is uh, the first one is figure two, which is an aerial photograph of the site. And I've highlighted the existing dwelling, which you can see is uh, almost 400 feet from Little Harbor. And the second photograph I've given you is a photograph of the existing home as it sits on the coastal bank. So that slope you see there, uh, that is the coastal bank. Um, and as I mentioned at the last hearing, this is a secondary, maybe a tertiary coastal bank on the property. First coastal bank's probably the edge of the marsh at Little Harbor. Uh, then there's a lower coastal bank at the edge of the bordering vegetated wetlands. And this is the uppermost coastal bank. Uh, this coastal bank does not meet any of the performance standards that are in the Wetlands uh, Protection Act. It's, it's not a sediment source because it's 400 feet from Little Harbor. There's no erosion. Uh, there's no windblown sand coming off of this bank. Um, it does have a vertical buffer capacity for storm damage, but we believe upon completion of construction, that will only be enhanced because we're removing this structure which is built into the coastal bank this will be totally removed that cellar hole will be filled in and that coastal bank will be sloped and stabilized so the potential for storm damage from debris from this home is no longer there so we're actually enhancing the capacity of that bank to act as a vertical buffer to storm damage um, and as you can see it's pretty modest coastal bank. I think if you had the chance to go out there to view it, um, it, it the term coastal bank wouldn't be the first thing to spring into your mind. Um, and obviously it's part of the lawn and it's, it's a Cape Cod lawn and that's what they intend to, to maintain in the future. Uh, I believe this complies with your bylaw and your 30 foot no setback requirement. We still do have part of the structure in your 30 foot setback to this secondary or tertiary coastal bank. But overall, there's a 36% reduction in impervious area. So that comes from the removal of the home and it comes from the removal of the paved parking drive area. Uh, and as you see, the proposed dwelling is entirely behind the existing cottage and the deck is entirely behind the existing cottage. So. Uh, a strict interpretation of your bylaw, we could reoccupy that footprint with our structure. So um, we believe what we fully comply with your bylaw. Um, so we, th we think this project uh, complies with your bylaw. Uh, it's, it's an enhancement as far as the coastal bank. Uh, probably when this was in, uh, originally constructed, it appears that that bank was shaped um, into this fashion. Regardless, it is what it is right now when it meets the de technical definition of a bank, but 
it doesn't really meet any of the performance standards or we feel that those will be enhanced. So that's my summary of our position from before. Uh, Maureen may have something to add and Mr. Kelleher may have something to add as well. Go ahead, Maureen. Maureen Thomas, Buzzards Bay Coalition. And I'd like to just emphasize the net benefit to the environment that this project does have. In addition to what Brian just mentioned, we are upgrading the septic system. The cesspool is currently located on the coastal bank in the flood zone. Uh, if this project doesn't get approved, I'm not sure what the owners will do, but there's a possibility that that cesspool could remain, the structure could remain in the existing location on the coastal bank. Uh, as you know, we are proposing to work with the Osmonds to upgrade that cesspool to a nitrogen reducing layer cake. I'm not sure if you received some uh, construction summaries on the layer cake or if you're interested, you did receive those. Okay, um, just to give you a little bit more information about the construction of those, but they are operating really well in the locations where we have installed them throughout the watershed in removing a considerable amount of the nitrogen uh, in addition to bacteria, which the cesspool does not remove. So another thing to, to think about, um, not just nitrogen removal, but also bacteria removal with uh, uh, the layer cake septic system that we're proposing. How long ago did this house change hands? Three years ago? Approximately three years ago. And the Board of Health did not require a, a cesspool, a Title V at that time? We've been before the Board of Health for the layer cake system and it has they, been approved. That the layer cake has been Appro okay. approved by the Board of Health. Thank you. Yes. yes. It's also been approved by DEP through the piloting process. May I pass up, give you all a letter from one of the neighbors? I, do we have, is that the Sutter, we Sutter's? Sutter's? We have it. It came in our packet. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'd like to read into the record. All right. The, uh, to members of the Conservation Commission, we are a Butters of Lot uh, 18 Maritime Drive, owned by Gary and Karen Osmond. In addition to our, our family holds the lease for Shellfish Grant eight, number 85 in Little Harbor, directly in front of the Osmond property. They are proposing to build a new ho home and replace the existing summer cottage and have shared us the plans for their new home. Having four generations of our family owning and living on the property next to the Osmond property and having our family oyster business directly in front of their property, we have naturally taken an interest in their proposed new home. After seeing the plans and located, location of the new home, we have no objection to the new house and its location on the property. In addition, the septic system they propose to use is of the design that captures as much high percentage of nitrogen than currently required. Nitrogen from septic runoff poses a threat to Buzzards Bay and specifically our family oyster business. The Osmonds' willingness to spend the extra time and money and to install state-of-the-art septic system is deeply appreciated. Therefore, we hope the Conservation Commission will vote to approve the construction of their new house and septic system. Signed, Benjamin Sutter and Lynn Sutter. Uh, and if you, you'd like, I, I, have a, I have a front view of what the new house is going to look like if you want to take a look at it. I don't. That's all right. Okay. It wouldn't be something we would have a comment on, and we're looking at the plan on the, on the ground. and the. Yep. That's fine. Yep. Thank you. But the neighbors have seen the plan, both uh, the uh, Sutterds and uh, the Gleasons, and agree that this is a, a good development for this piece of property. No. Any questions on the board? No. Any I comment? Think it's <coughs> kind of an improvement. <coughs> I don't like that cesspool. Right now, the front yard is cleared down to what? The second coastal bank? I'm getting the first, second, and third coastal banks confused. Yeah, uh, it's about it, where it is. Yeah, it's lawn area to down to the BVW, which is the roughly New the New England lawn. It's not green. <laughs> Cape, Cape Cod lawn, I call it. Cape yeah. Cod, okay, yeah. Cape Cod lawn. They're lucky to have anything growing there. Um, 
And I noticed on the overview that there must be some type of trail going down to the water. Just there be no further clearing in front of the cottage. We're going to, you're going to keep it where it is now for clearing? Yes, and all, all the new plants will be uh, as recommended by Coastal Zone Management. Uh, Karen has a degree in environmental science, and she is picking plants directly from Coastal Zone Management's plant, advised plants for coastal, coastal areas. So, and uh, she's slowly developing a plan of exactly what she wants to do, but it's all natural materials to native. But the only planting being proposed for this site, am I missing it on the plan? No, we're not, sh we don't show it on our septic plan. Um, she's developing something on her own, which you can uh, condition that David can review and approve or, or however you want to address that. Those are existing pines. What would you say, do you want to say anything about planting? I would suggest um, a condition, if the commission chooses to approve it, to condition that the planting scheme be submitted to us for review and approval before it gets put in place. I'm assuming she wants to fill in some of that open grassy area with some native plants. And some ground cover. Yeah. Yeah. Something that'll actually grow. <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing else, need a motion to close the hearing? So moved. I have a motion. Second. I heard a second, the hearing is closed. Okay, um, the only thing I've heard uh, on it is that we will ask for a uh, ability to approve the planting as it's being defined, is that correct? Um, correct with the other standard conditions um, and that added condition, yes. All right, does anybody want to make a motion, please, on this order of conditions on this project? Sure. <laughs> and will we approve the project under the standard order of conditions and that we see a planting uh, plan? for approval before any planting is done? Before anything is started, that is the motion. Second. I have a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I opposed, abstain. I guess I can say, please Mr. see Mr. Prichette before you start anything. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And I look forward to some update on that layering system. Yes, I'll invite you all out so you can perhaps see the construction. It's pretty interesting. And I hope you all have a happy 4th of July. Same to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming in on the 3rd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for having us. My idea. <laughs> it could have been worse. It could have been in the traffic when I came. Yeah. I've been in it all day. Mm -hmm. I guess it'll last. If all of it was. Okay. We have one new hearing. <laughs> Which we should have taken 20 minutes ago. That's all right. Um, Pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6, a public hearing will be held in Room 320, Wareham Multi Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass., on July 3, 2019, at 7 15 p.m., on the request for determination of applicability for Ralph Pickett, P.O. Box 1306, Onset, Mass., 02558. Dash 1306 to install a frost wall located at Assessor's Map 1, Lot 343, 813th Street, on sit. And I'm surprised the house hasn't fallen down. Anybody here for this project? I see no one coming before us. Um, there was somebody out in the hall. I don't know if they were here for this or what, but um, yeah. Wasn't, wasn't he here last meeting? Oh. The hall is empty. The hall is empty. Table it for a moment because they may be back if they had an issue with the. Here we go. Ask him. For oh. Mr. Pickett. Yes. Okay. You're up. 
There's no one there when I looked. <laughs> You're uh, sure. Please identify yourself for the record. Ralph Pickett. Hey, Ralph, do you have that Oh, this is Grayson Pickett. Okay. Do you have the green cards? The no do. butter yes. notifications? Thank you. Yeah, these are a few, but you play with yep. these. Yep, we'll take Thank those you. two. Oh, you want these two? Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Pachette will speak to the project, then you can have your turn. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this project site is at 813th Street. Well, let me hand these out first. That would help. We'll share. <laughs> uh, so again, the project site is at 813th Street in Onset, and the project involves the construction of foundation walls under an existing dwelling, and this is within a coastal flood zone. Um, so work has already started on this project, um, and there was no building permits or conservation approval at that point. Uh, the building inspector did issue a stop work order requesting permits to be uh, obtained. So at this point, material had been excavated out from under part of the dwelling so that foundation walls could be installed as there were only pier supports on one side of the house. Um, an engineered foundation detail has been submitted as part of the application showing a concrete block foundation wall to be constructed. Uh, and this would be a crawl space type foundation. And the site is within coastal flood zone AE elevation 14. Um, the work is not in the buffer zone to any other resource areas. Um, I really didn't have a problem with the project, so I would recommend the approval of it. But I just did have a question about the material that's being removed. Um, what is going to be done with that? Is that just going to be removed from the site if there's any excess material? Yes. Okay. Um, so with that being the case, I would recommend the approval of the project with a negative determination number two. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, I'm here for any questions. I don't have any insight to give you. No building permit? I'm here to, this is part of the process to get yeah, a building but permit. Well, the, um, there was an emergency. One of the um, uh, supports had slid. It was partially excavated before I bought it to get to the utilities. And um, so I just went in and took corrective action. Questions from the board? No, I guess not. It's right now, you cannot, no one can live in that house, correct? Yes. That wasn't your primary resident? It is. So, right now under the house, I saw some, what, are they four by fours? What's that one? Four by four? Yeah, that's a four by four. That's They're six by sixes. <clears throat> six by sixes, that's a tube? Were you planning to dig underneath the house all the way around? Well, I, my main concern was to get the corners that had failed. If you notice, the house is pitched to the rear from the time, I assume it was failing over time and then it's been accelerating. So my, my goal was to get the corner to you know get that done, but there are, f I think, five six by sixes supporting it. Each six by six will hold 8,000 pounds in vertical. It replaced one of the uh, one eight by eight concrete pier. So right now it's adequately supported. But the objective is to get the f concrete block wall under there. Correct, to have, well, yes, absolutely. Because I, I think that's part of the problem is the ground settled. This was done in 1940 or whatever, and it served its time, right. but it wasn't done 
you know, I think with the intent of any longevity, and we'd like to do it once and do it right. Right. So, do you have any more digging you have to do? I do, yes. Um, so it's, well, the, the, right the, now, the back corners are exposed, so you have to dig to the front. That's correct. So, <laughs> the, the way I'm working it is, uh, and I have the work with the engineer, is to, uh, you know, support the building as I go. So, we're using block, and we'll use multiple footings uh, and tie them in with rod. So that way there, it, you know, the house is livable and not uh, in danger. So the material you're going to remove from under the house, if you don't use it, will be removed from the area. Is that your, that was your question? Yes. Yeah. Any questions from the board? No. Nope. It's got to be fixed. Could you comment on this? Oh, no, we have no comments from the audience. <laughs> All right, I need a motion. Motion to close. I have a motion to close the hearing. Okay. And I heard a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? The hearing's closed. Motion for a negative two. <clears throat> motion for a negative two. Do you want a fine? Started the work without approval. Um, did the building inspector do anything? I don't know. Will you find anything from the building inspector and building department for I working? Was, I was fined by the uh, health inspector. Health inspector. $100. Um, Kenny is proposing a $100 fine for starting the work without a permit. I just, uh, I ask for some mercy. I'm really hurt. Would have been 300 yeah, I, every, everything you can do to help, I would appreciate. Oh, All right, motion. tell you what, I'll suspend the fine. Um, because of your situation, but anything that you do to that house, you check with the agent to make sure that you're on the right path. Yes. Okay? Okay, Kenny's motion, yep. was it a negative? Negative two. Negative two, no fine. No, I'm gonna. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstained. Before you start working again, see Aye. Mr. Bichette, okay? Is that you? That's different. Oh, right. Okay. Our agent, All right. Conservation Commission Just office. Stop by the office. Okay. Or call him. Or sure. Uh, if you call, he can meet you or whatever. Yeah, as, so you'll make markings in the uh, building permit process, or I see you first. Right, so once okay. uh, your building permit application is um, submitted, or I believe it's in process, so now that it's been approved, I can move forward on it, and the building inspector can take care of it from there. Okay. All right. Thank, All right, thank you. you very much. All right, thank you. How old is your How yeah. old is your... He's, he's 20 months old. <gasps> Almost yeah. a tour. Yes, I think he found too early. We're, we're looking for board members. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's a lot of energy. <laughs> he makes dad tired. We need, we need some youth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now to certifications of compliance. You must be here for one of them. Size so quarter road. You want to do that next? Okay. You didn't want to come in, now you don't want to leave. <laughs> that yeah. Take it home with you. Was, uh. this, was this the shared dock between these two, please? Okay, but here, yes. take the keys. How about yeah. that for a memory? It should have been three and five Sias Point Road, probably yeah. should have said, because they came along and said, hey, we didn't like your decision, we're going, we're going to fight you, and they got their dock. Yes. I, I have no knowledge of that. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah, that is correct. This is a request for a certificate of compliance for a pier ramp and float system that was approved. This is a, a shared pier between the two property owners. So it's built kind of right on the property line between the two. Um, the project was built according to the plan and the, all the conditions have been met. So I would recommend the issuance of the certificate of compliance for this project. Anything to comment you'd like to add? No, Madam Chair. You just weren't here when you 
<laughs> you weren't here at the beginning. <laughs> no, no, I was not. But it, I mean, it is my project at this point, and, and so I just wanted to uh, be here in case there were any questions. Okay. okay. I see no questions. And someone wants to make a motion to? Move to close? Or move no, to no, accept the certification of compliance. I have a move to grant the certificate. Oh, grant. grant the word grant. I have a motion to grant the certification of compliance. Second. I heard a second. All in favor? I, I opposed. Abstain. Done. Thank you all. Have a great fourth. You too. You too. Okay. Wow. I'm reading the letter regarding uh, that property on um, Prospect Street. Somebody got smart. Mm. Okay. Prospect. Karadimus? Oh. <laughs> this letter's in here. I hadn't seen it yet. I hadn't. Uh, while you're looking, um, we have a set of minutes from May 15th, 2019, that were emailed to us prior to this meeting. Um, Kenny was not here. Everybody else was. I just have one correction that on page, um, page four on the first line, uh, that Mr. Taggart be changed to Miss Taggart for the Clark hearing. And that's definitely just a typo. And um, I'll take a motion to approve these minutes as amended. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Subst abstain? Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Uh, seven, three, nine, <coughs> So that's that. So the next one is certification of compliance for Robert Ferretti for Pond View Terrace. Um, yes, this was for the construction of a single family home on a subdivision off of um, Carver Road, which is called Pond View Terrace. And so this um, project has been completed according to the order of conditions. So I would recommend the issuance of the certificate of compliance for this project as well. I need a motion to grant to the certification of compliance. I have a motion to grant. Second. I have, I have a second. I heard Mr. White. That's fine. Move to grant. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a second. All in favor? I opposed. Aye. Abstained. Okie dokie. Next thing. We have a MACC annual dues in our packet for $287. Motion to pay. I have a motion to pay. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Please submit for payment. The next thing on the board is reorganization as we do at the beginning of every fiscal year. Um, I would like to stay on a chair one more year. It's not broken. Don't fix it. <laughs> motion to Motion to keep it as is. is. And that includes that Kenny is, is the vice chair. I need a motion. I just, oh, just, did, Kenny I just, just did. did a motion. I need a second. <laughs> second. All in favor? I opposed, abstained. Okay. One last thing. Somebody on social media was having a great time and put out this unbelievable picture of this home at XX Highland Shore. I'm going to pass it around. There's this nice little walkway up to the water, a boat sitting on the grass, and you can see where the grass has been mowed and mowed and mowed. The marsh. Not the, the, marsh. the marsh. And at high tide, that marsh is fully <coughs> underwater. Bring them in. So, so much for social media for giving us some hints as to some violations out there. So, um, Mr. Bichette will look at the property on Monday, and I will think have them come in could very well be if I could reach them by for the next meeting then yes 
if not the meeting after that. Yes. Somewhere down the line to say no more mowing of the marsh. I mean, yeah, it looks very nice from the sky when you have a uh, Google map of it, but it's not what we do to our wetlands. Isn't that something? Oh, what a pretty picture. All my mowed front lawn all the way down to the water's edge. Okay. Is there a fine involved in that? There probably will be a fine, yes. <laughs> Is it by day? <laughs> that becomes a question. If we find people and the bylaws say per day, when does the per day start? In the time of the violation. When we find the violation or when they're notified of the violation? That when they're notified and believe is what it, what it is. Until corrected? Am I right, David? Um, yes, once they're notified of the violation, typically the board would grant them some opportunity to remedy the problem. Um, but it's really subject to the commission. The commission could say that they could start fining by the day immediately after the violation occurs, or typically they've been granting some time for the applicant to comply. And then if they don't by the time frame, then daily fines can kick in. So it's really up to the judgment call of the commission. Have we ever issued daily fines? We have in a couple of cases a few years collected? back, and yes, we did get it collected. One, one fine, this was going back, I want to say probably 12, 14 years ago now. We ended up when issuing a, a fine that was by the day, and the total was around $5,000. Yeah, I remember that. Was that was the max. And they actually paid it, you know. Yep. Well. Yeah. That was for Carlton Place. Uh, yep. Uh, ha, ha, ha. yep. Yes. I remember it. The commercial property yeah, on Onset. Yeah. I, they put in affordable housing. Yeah, we, right. Uh, we are limited to three hundred dollars. How does that come about, and is it changeable? Because I realize that we have a lot of one-time, a one-time. You know, we're going to fine you once and three hundred. It's legislature. It's it's state level. The fines are set because me and David have had that conversation over the last 20 years. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is, it is max, uh, and the town can't really, under a non criminal uh, situation like this, well, issue I think that more than 300 was criminal. a day. <laughs> um, there was some talk by the state to bump that up to $1,000 a day, but it didn't yet pass at the state level, so it's still 300 a day. What do um, our neighbors do? for these type of fines? Well, they're all subject to the same State. amount. Okay. Um, so some, some towns though do also incorporate um, a double fee or double the fee of a notice of intent. So let's say someone does something, then they have to come in and file an application. Some towns double the cost of the application fee for someone that does an after the fact. Um, so in the town building department, our town building department double charges people for starting projects without building permits. So when they come in, then they got to pay double the building permit fee. So, you know, there's different things that can be done. Um, a lot of the violations we get are sort of homeowners who don't really know what's going on. But then every now and again, we do get some that really should be fined more than $300. And that's up to the commission. You can call it by the day and make that number or whatever you might want it to be. Now, you seemed surprised that someone actually paid the fine. Are those fines, are those fines actually attached to the property? Um, they're, they're attached to the owner. Or lien or a yeah, they're, they're attached to the owner. Um, if the property gets sold, um, I think that's a legal question to bring up to our town council as to whether or not the new owner has to absorb the fine. Um, so I'm not sure the answer to that. Okay. I'd have to find that out. Um, we really haven't had the circumstance where the property gets sold and then, you know, the new owner or the fine hasn't been paid yet. So uh, we haven't had to deal with that yet. Yeah, most of them can absorb a $300 fine. Right. Most of them you know, do pay it. I mean, we have a pretty high percentage they don't rate pay for. Of, of paying. Um, 
And as I said, we've only had a few where we've had multiple days of fining, and those are only ones where someone is bucking the system and saying they're not going to comply, you know. But the ones that are trying to be compliant, usually we've kept it to the $300. Right. Unless it's some crazy project like Carlton Place or some egregious thing where they fill in, you know. A giant wall somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or took down a coastal bank and his, yeah, the wall, because the, they wanted to. The letter we got on the wall. He's yes. asking for six months. To, when does the six months start? Uh, I would say from the, letter? the date of the letter, yeah. Okay. Right. And that is going to be, you know, a substantial project. I'm sure he's not going to all of a sudden go whole hog and just spend all his time there. Cause yeah. it's, right, he's got to make a mm, living. Right. So. You good? Got to the end of the um, I did ask Mr. Bichette um, if he can make an arrangement with the natural resources to allow this board to go visit our coastal areas along our rivers and bays and stuff like that in case we can view some nasty activity. Because sometimes we can't see, like this one right here that I just showed you off of Highland, I drove down there, I could not see it from any public parking area. Or a street. Or, well, the streets. The streets yeah. go yeah. down and end on the water. And I went down 12th, and I went down 13th, and I went down 10th, and I went down. I mean, it just couldn't find this one by looking yeah, where I, was, I could stand. I was up a skiff Sunday. We took a ride, ride and, you know, we just followed the shore and then up the river. And yeah, then, I mean, it yeah, would. You see a lot more. It would be interesting to take a look at that, take some pictures, and do it again a year from now and compare pictures to say, why is that lawn so green? All that nitrogen, <coughs> as opposed to a Cape Cod lawn. <coughs> anyway, so can I have the magic words? Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Everybody have a good fourth, and thank you for coming in on the third. Now.